Fat, bulging, and round, shaped like a bird. Bulging, swelling outward, sticking out. Confetti, small pieces of colored paper traditionally thrown on birthdays and marriage ceremonies. Dawdling, being slow, enraptured, extremely pleased by. Infinite, limitless, impossible to measure. Intricate, extremely. Detailed and complicated, oblivious, unaware, phobia, an extreme fear of something, predator, an animal that hunts and kills another for food, crashed, rejected or stopped, rapidity, moving or reacting with great speed, reluctantly, with hesitation, unwillingly, repercussion, an unintended Unwelcome consequence of an event or action. Rotten, large and plump. Scuttled, wrapped with quick, hasty steps. Surreptitiously, secretively, sneakily. So, this extract is, the, is from the autobiography, My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Dorrell. Dorrell was an expert in studying animals. When he was 10 years old, Doral, his older siblings and his mother moved to Corfu in Greece to live with Doral's grown-up brother, Larry. It was here that Doral began to collect and keep animals as pets. The crumbling wall that surrounded the garden alongside the house has a rich hunting ground for me. It was an ancient brick wall that had plastered over, plastered over. But now, this outer skin was green with moss, bulging and sagging with the damp of many winters. The whole surface was an intricate map of cracks, some several inches wide, others as fine as hairs. Here and there, large pieces had dropped off and revealed the rows of those pink bricks lying beneath. The inhabitants of the world were mixed cloth, and they were divided into day and night workers, the hunters and the hunted. At night, the toads and jackals were the hunters. Their prey was the population of stupid, absent-minded green flies, moths of all shapes and sizes, and rotten beetles hurrying with their night's work. By day, it was difficult to tell the difference between the prey and the predators. Everything seemed to feed off everything else. The hunting wasps searched out caterpillars and spiders. The spiders hunted for flies. The dragonflies fed off the spiders and the flies, and the swift multicolored wall lizards fed off everything. But my favorite were the shyest members of the wall community who did not seek any attention. They were also the most dangerous. You hardly ever saw one unless you looked for it, and yet there must have been several hundred living in the crags of the wall. If you gently lifted a piece of the loose plastered away from the brick, they are crouching beneath it, with no little black scorpion an inch long, looking as though he were made out of polished chocolate. They were queer looking things, with their flattened oval bodies, their neat crooked legs, the enormous crab-like claws, burbus and minky, jointed as armor and the tail like a string of brown leaves ending in a thing like a rose thorn. The scorpion would lie there quite quietly as you examine him only raising his tail as warning sign if you breathe too hard. Too hard on him. Then one day I found a fat female scorpion in the wall wearing what at first glance appeared to be a pale fawn fur coat. Closer inspection proved that his strange garment was made up of a mass of tiny babies clinging to the mother's back. 
I was enraptured by his family and I made my march to smuggle them into the house and up to my bedroom so that I might keep them and watch them grow up with infinite care. I moved the other end family into a matchbox and then hurried to the villa. It was rather unfortunate then that just as I entered the door, lunch should be served. However, I placed the matchbox carefully on the mantelpiece in the drawing room and made my way to the ending room and joined the family for the meal. Dawdling over and my food, feeding Roger surreptitiously under the table and listening to the family arguing, I completely forgot about my exciting new capture. At last, Larry, having finished, fetched the cigarettes from the drawing room. And lying back in his chair, he put in his mouth he put one in his mouth and picked up the matchbox he had brought. Oblivious that the end of my happy days was about to come. I watched my eldest brother interestingly as still talking loudly he opened the matchbox. Now I insist to this day that the female scorpion meant no harm. She was nervous and a little annoyed at being shut up in a box for so long. And so she seized the first opportunity to escape. She pulled herself out of the box with great rapidity. Her babies clinging on her desperately, on desperately, and, and scuttled into the back of Larry's hand. They're not, they're not quite certain what to do next. She thought her sting curved up at the ready. Larry, feeling the movement of her claws, glanced down to see what it was. And from that moment, Binks got increasingly confused. He uttered a roar of fright that brought Roger out from beneath the table, barking wildly. With the flick of his hand, he sent the unfortunate scorpion flying down the table, and she landed midway between Margot and Leslie, scattering babies like confetti as she turned on the clothes. And with that, there was a rapid change from peace to chaos, totally enraged at his treatment. The creature sped towards Leslie, her sting quivering with emotion. Leslie leaped to his feet, overturning his chair, and flicked out desperately with his napkin, sending the scorpion rolling across the cloth towards Margot, who promptly let out of a scream, out a scream that any railway engine would have been proud to produce. Yuck, look out, look out. They are coming, screamed Margot. All we need is a book, roared Leslie. Don't panic, hit them with a book. Mother, completely bewildered by this sudden and rapid change from peace to chaos, put on her glasses and peered down the table to see what was causing. The pandemonium. And at that moment, Margot is a Margot in a vein. Attempt to stop the scorpion's advance, hurled a glass of water at it. The shower, of, the shower of water missed the animal completely, but successfully drenched Mother, who, not being able to stand cold water promptly, lost her breath and sat gasping at the end of the table unable to protest even. Get a knife! Hit them with a book! shouted Larry. That boy will kill the lot of us. Bah! Look at the table! Knee deep in the scorpions. Kill them! Oh no! Don't hurt them! I will catch them! I pleaded until eventually. Backed up, uh, backed up by mother. Leslie's suggestion that the whole lot be killed was quashed. By the time a certain amount of order had been restored, all the baby scorpions had hidden themselves, hidden themselves under various plates and bits of cutlery. The results of his incident were numerous. While the family, still feeling angry and frightened, moved to the sitting room, I spent half an hour rounding up the babies, picking them up in a teaspoon and returning them to their mother's back. Then I carried them outside on a saucer and reluctantly released them on the garden wall.
Roger and I went and spent the afternoon on the hillside, for I felt it would be wise to allow the family to have a break before seeing them again. Larry developed a phobia about matchbox, but from my point of view, the worst repercussion of the whole affair was that Mother decided to try to stop me from exploring the animal world. You are running wild again. It is high time you received a little more education. She said, I'm getting you a tutor by Gerald Dorough.